So, you know what targets do, but you still don't understand actions. Not a problem. Actions come in three types, points, edges, and faces. Which type of action you can select depends on where your mouse is hovering when you right click. If you right click over a point, you will see the point actions. If you right click over an edge, you will see the edge actions. And if you right click over a face, you will see the face actions. For now, we're just going to be working with the point actions. And the first one is bridge. Now bridge can have two targets. When target is set to two points, you'll be able to connect any two points you click on. Click once, click twice, and it'll automatically connect them. If target is set to ring though, by default it will turn all the polygroups around the point you click into their own polygroup. And crease the edges that surround it. If you change this to not crease, the edges will not be creased. And if you do not regroup, it will not create a new polygroup around your point. If action is set to crease and target is set to point, it will crease all the edges connected to that point. If target is set to shortest path, you can left click different points and it will automatically try and connect from the last point you click. You can also hold down left click and drag, which works really well for long straight edges. When point actions is set to delete, and your mouse is hovering over a point, if you left click, it will delete that point. So, you have absolutely no clue why there's an option to do nothing. Not a problem. This confused me a lot when I started too. But doing nothing is actually quite useful. Remember, all three modes for face, edges, and points are on at the same time. So let's say at the moment you're just trying to change the polygroup colors of a bunch of faces one at a time. And you're trying to work fast, but sometimes you you accidentally click on an edge or you accidentally click on a point and you end up doing things you really didn't want to. Well this is an ideal situation which you would want to set points and edges to do nothing. If you set points and edges to do nothing, you'll never accidentally click them. That's what this option is for. So you don't accidentally click points and do something you don't want to. Point extrude just means that if you left click on a point, it will create a new point coming from the one you clicked. If you hold control when you do this, instead of extruding a new point, it's just going to drag the one you selected. If you extrude and press alt, you'll be able to change the color of the polygroup for the new faces that are generated. Make curve allows you to left click points in order to draw curves. Every time you press the space bar, you will reset the beginning of the curve and be able to start drawing new ones. Now once you have a curve, you can do all the normal curve things like apply a chain or a tube or a tail or all the usual. But you can also right click on the curve, you can decide what happens if you left click the curve, you can choose from doing nothing, delete the curve, or make a bevel. The rows modifier determines how many segments emerge from the bevel, it defaults to single, but you can also choose between two, four and eight segments. This area here determines the pattern of segmentation. Linea means a segment is divided equally. Sharp pushes most of the segments towards the edges, and soft pushes most of the segments to the middle. And if you want a custom distance, you can decide that here. If point actions is set to mask, when your mouse is hovering over a point and you left click, it will mask that point. This is basically just an easy way to manually pick what points you mask and what points you don't. And as usual, if you hold alt, it will unmask instead. When point action is set to move, it lets you move clusters of points by left Left clicking. By default it is set to brush by radius which just means it will move the points within the red circle of your brush size. While holding left click if you hold shift it will slide your points along the surface of the object. And if you hold alt it will move your selection forwards and backwards. Now you can mess with these modifiers down here if you want on your own time but honestly I have never needed to adjust these values. If you set it to infinite x it will control all the points horizontally to what you click. And if you set it to infinite y it will do the same thing but vertically. Normally it will only move the points on the same face that you click, but if you move brush to infinite depth, it will grab all the points that are directly behind the object, and if you want to do the same thing but with the same size as your brush radius, set it to XYZ instead. If you only want to grab most of the points behind the direction that the point you clicked is facing, then you should try setting mode to infinite Z. QMesh is a mix between extrude and merge points. So if you hover your mouse over a face, that face is going to glow. Then if you get close to a point and you left click, you'll be able to extrude that point in and out. Now the cool part is when you do the same thing but to a point right next to it. If two points get close enough then they will automatically merge together and create a complete piece of solid geometry. That's really all this does. It's super useful and the modifiers down here just control the snap distance required before snapping together. The lower the value, the earlier the points start to snap together. Slice points lets you cut into the mesh by left clicking a point. Every time you click a point it will create a new slice from the last point. If you want more control you can always drag click until you're happy. Normally a default to crease in a slice, but if you don't want to crease, just change the modifiers to uncrease, and it will do the exact same thing without the creases. The slide point action defaults to brush radius. If you left click, it will grab all the points inside the red circle and move them along the surface of 
the model. Normally, it will try to keep the point on the edge it's sliding, but if you hold shift, you'll be able to stop snapping to the edges that you drag. If you hold alt while clicking, it will move the points forwards and backwards. Under modifiers, you can change the settings. Infinite X drags all the points horizontal to the one that you click, and Infinite Y does the same thing, but vertically. Infinite Depth just means it will grab all the points even through the object on the back side. Infinite XYZ does the same thing, but with the full brush size. And Infinite Z is similar, but only for the Z axis. The split action will let you expand a circle from the point. If you tap alt, you can change the color of the new poly group. Normally, it will default to quads, but if you triangulate the center, instead of quads, it's going to use tries. If you don't like the crease on the outside, you can change it to do not crease here. And if you don't want it to make a new poly group, you can tell it not to make a new group like this. If you set mode to ring instead, it'll make a much smoother circle. And unlike the point, if you do it on an edge, it will change the shape of the object to match itself. And just like the other mode, you can take the creases off with this and decide whether or not to regroup the different colors of the polygroups. And if you don't want the edges to have equal distances from the center, you can turn that off here. So here's what it looks like without equalize, and here's what it looks like with it. This is a really easy way to just make circular extrusions or intrusions in a hard surface shape. The stitch action lets you left click one point to another. By default it sets to end, which means when you left click two points together, it'll merge both to the second point. Every time you press a space bar, you will reset and be able to start new ones. If you change modifiers to mid, then both points will meet at the middle. And if you set it to start, then both points will meet at the first point. Point transpose just allows you to left click on a point and it will automatically mask everything except that point and activate the gizmo, which you can then use all the usual gizmo controls on. If you hold alt before you left click the point though, then instead it's gonna mask everything except the point and you'll move everything else instead. And as always, hope you have a fantastic day and I'll see you around.